A Kid's Book About Neurodiversity by Laura Pettix, M-S-O-T-R slash L. Better Together. This book is best read together, grown up and kid. To Liliana, your brain is beautiful and unique. Don't ever let anyone tell you otherwise. Thank you for teaching me how to be a better parent. Thank you for being patient with me. Thank you for being you. I love you. Intro. What do you think of when you think of neurodiversity? Maybe you think of a person, or a label, or a diagnosis. The truth is, the entire human species is neurodiverse. We have different brains from one another, and that's what makes us who we are. Our brains communicate using neurons throughout our body that help us learn, communicate, play, and experience the world in a very specific way. Some people have brain wiring that's even more unique than the rest of us, which is called a neurodivergent brain. People with neurodivergent brains experience the world differently, which means they learn, communicate, and play differently. This book will help illustrate that neurodivergent brains are not worse than neurotypical brains. In fact, by the end of this book, I hope we'll celebrate neurodivergent brains exactly as they are. What do you know about your brain? What does it look like? Where is it? What does it do? Do you know the answers to these questions? If not, no worries. We'll cover a lot of things about the brain in this book. Everything you do and why you do it is because of your brain. Brains from the outside can all look the same. But there are certain parts of the brain that aren't so visible, and those little pieces are what make us all different. In your brain, there are cells called neurons, and the way these neurons connect in your brain is what makes you who you are. These connections make you feel excited for your birthday, love the taste of your favorite food, remember the words to your favorite song, or really fast when you're playing tag or any other game you're good at. So everyone's brain is different. Everyone's brain learns, plays, communicates, and experiences the world differently. And that's called neurodiversity. To get really specific here, neuro means neurons. Remember those little cells? And diversity means differences. Neurodiversity is good, and it's something to celebrate. That's what we're here to do today. Even though everyone has a different brain, most humans have a similar neurotype. The two main neurotypes are neurotypical and neurodivergent. For example, most neurotypical brains can learn by sitting still while listening to their teacher. Or they communicate happiness by smiling, clapping, and saying yay. Or they feel comfortable playing hide-and-seek. Or they want cozy hugs from someone they love. Neurotypical brains can have differences too, but they share many similarities. Neurodivergent brains are distinct because their connections are even more unique. Instead of sitting still, a person with a neurodivergent brain might learn best by standing or fidgeting with something. Instead of clapping, they might communicate happiness by flapping their hands. Instead of hide-and-seek, they might like making patterns with toys or talking about a favorite show. Instead of hugs, they might want a high-five or no touch at all. Let's pause and think about how your brain works. What do you need in order to learn? When you experience feelings, how do you like to share them? What are some things that make your body feel calm? Turn to the person you're reading with and ask them the same questions. Feel free to pause the book here and talk to a person that you're sharing this with. What did you find out? I bet you noticed some differences between you and the person reading this book with you. Cool, right? That's called neurodiversity. Now, I want you to think about your classroom or your neighborhood. Do you know someone who expresses their feelings differently than what you're familiar with? Do they communicate in ways other than using their voice or wear the same thing every day or focus on their hands instead of looking at the person they're talking to? Have you ever seen someone be very emotional or have a big reaction to something you didn't understand? Some people have brains which experience some things in the world as unsafe or they just don't feel right. For example, imagine eating with your family. Your grown-ups usually make a meal one way, but this time they try something different. You might not like the new meal as much, but you still eat it. But for someone with a neurodivergent brain, this unexpected change might feel really big or scary, and their body responds to that. And this can look like crying, screaming, or moving their bodies in big ways. How does it feel when you see someone react differently than you, 
maybe uncomfortable or confusing? I've got a little secret for you. Part of the reason why it feels uncomfortable is because it's different from what neurotypical brains are used to. The truth is, society is designed for neurotypical brains and behaviors, and this excludes neurodivergent individuals. But we can change that. What if, instead of thinking, that's weird, or why are they acting like that? We thought, that must be really hard for them, or, hmm, that's a way of doing things that's different from mine. If one of your classmates chooses to rock their body or fidget with something in their hands during reading time, that is likely how they learn best. If you notice someone who wears headphones in the grocery store to limit the sounds around them, don't point or stare. If you know someone who likes to play the same thing over and over again, ask them questions about what they enjoy and see if you can join them. So basically, if you see someone whose behavior looks different than yours in your community, just notice it and think, hey, neurodiversity, that's cool. Some things matter more to brains than other brains. Some brains have different needs than other brains. Your brain might need a quiet space to focus on homework, and someone else's brain might need music to focus on homework. Everyone deserves to feel comfortable being who they are and expressing themselves in a way which is natural to them. What if someone said you had to wear shoes on your hands every day? How silly would that feel? Well, that's how we treat neurodivergent people a lot of the time. We expect them to laugh at jokes they don't understand, do things with their body that don't feel natural, or communicate in ways that feel overwhelming. This is essentially asking them to change the way their brains work. Let's not ask neurodivergent people to act more neurotypical. Let's acknowledge, celebrate, and love the unique wiring of every brain. And that starts with you. As soon as you close this book, put your hands on your head and think about all of the wonderful things about your brain that make you you. Share them with people you love. Feel the joy in acceptance. And then celebrate the neurodiversity around you and how our world is better for it. Outro. You did it! You just helped make the world a more neurodiverse, affirming place by reading this book with your kid. But your work doesn't end here. Please keep this conversation alive in your house, your classroom, your community by truly celebrating the differences you notice and leaving space for people to be who they are in a way that honors the way their brains are wired. Mindset shifts are the best place to start. For example, if you overhear someone saying, it's weird, why do they talk like that? You might help them rephrase by saying, hmm, they communicate differently than we do. That's new. You could help your kid notice their own neurodiversity by saying, wow, your brain needs extra movement during math time. Instead of placing the responsibility on neurodivergent individuals to conform to neurotypical norms, let's help them out. Let's be flexible. Think outside the box and make space for them to exist just as they are right alongside us. About the author. As an occupational therapist, Laura, she, her, works with families to help them better understand and support neurodivergent brains without focusing on making them appear more neurotypical. Laura has a brain wiring that makes her anxious and sensitive to sounds, much like her daughter. This experience, combined with a clinical background in studying how the brain works, has informed Laura's skilled approach to explaining these concepts to families and kids. Initially, Laura focused on teaching grown-ups about neurodiversity and how a kid's behavior is directly impacted by their nervous system and sensory processing abilities, but she realized that kids need this information too. Neurodivergent individuals can be proud of their brains, not feel ashamed because of their behavior, and neurotypical kids need to be aware that different brains exist, and we can love and respect them just as they are.